ಪರಮಾನಂದಮೀಶ್ವರ ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಟಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೇ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ಗರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸವಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಜೋತ ಪ್ರವೇಶ ಮಹಾಜ ವಿಮಾ ಪ್ರಸುತ್ತ ಸಂಜೀವಯ ತಗಿಲ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಧರ Hare Krishna so we will start today i think we have a lady less uh, devotees joined today so then we'll start off i think everybody will come one by one slowly because today is saturday i have not asked anybody's opinion whether we can have it saturday or not so i'm sorry maybe we can discuss today after the class whether we can have the we can postpone the program for sunday for what time all that we can discuss thank you we will start today anyway the summary of all 18 chapters of bhagavad gita <clears throat> so bhagavad gita we know about bhagavad gita we already you know went through the entire topic of bhagavad gita to some extent but to recap let again you know the basic things like bhagavad gita is a dialogue between krishna and arjuna and bhagavad gita was not spoken it is not an armchair philosophy it is not an impractical philosophy it was spoken on the battlefield of kurukshetra just before starting the great historical war between kauravas and pandavas it is called to establish rightful monarchy it was called a uh, dharma yuddha it's called dharma yuddha means the war for righteousness hare krishna prabhu ji glad to see you again hare krishna nice meeting seeing you again yeah thank you hare krishna oh one second so we will uh, One second, we sold on a minute. now so this is bhagavad gita's uh, introduction we know about it and immediately before the start of the battle 
you know arjuna the five pandavas and hundred and one kauravas they were fighting of course they were not only five and hundred and one there were so many people behind kauravas so many behind people behind pandavas also but comparatively the pandavas army strength was very less so immediately before starting the battle arjuna was very disturbed he was very disturbed to see that all his cousins uncles grandfather vishwadev teacher dronacharya the former friends and supporters on the side of the enemy because enemy war means is not a play you know it is like if you are losing you are losing your life and if you are gaining you are killing those people like opposite to you <clears throat> and whom arjuna is supposed to kill he is supposed to kill you know his cousin's grandfather teacher the guru dronacharya <clears throat> they are all standing on the other side so arjuna was thinking what's the point in fighting this war and so he decides for his personal reasons that it would be better not to fight that was a decision arjuna has taken he thinks it would be better to renounce the kingdom and retire to the forest and live as an ascetic than to kill those who are his flesh and blood and dear to his heart grandfather teacher everybody so why would why would you do such a horrible war ghastly war that's what he was thinking but in the meantime his considerations were personal but then he was forgetting his duty that's what we study he was for, he forgets his duty to defend the kingdom and establish a righteous monarchy he is supposed to actually you know fight for the sake of establishing dharma that was his duty to kshatriya because adharma was going on it is not only the adharma is not only that uh, yudhishthira was not made the king that is not the adharma the adharma is that duryodhana was not a properly trained person to rule he was very selfish we have seen his mentality you know in our uh, first first chapter of bhagavad gita we have seen his mentality he was so nasty right he was saying this and that and he was wanting to actually he was not bothered about dharma he wanted to actually finish kill all the uh, pandavas who were righteous who were devotees whereas he was not a devotee he was not considering krishna as supreme personality of god he was not because only a devotee a person who cares for dharma can consider krishna as supreme lord duryodhana was not so he was not a righteous person to do uh, the administration of the country because administration part of administration is to make people happy and that happiness is possible only through only through god consciousness or krishna consciousness which he cannot give anyway that's why it was not right this so therefore it was arjuna's duty to fight he was forgetting a higher duty he was forgetting a higher higher reason to fight and he was he was settling for a lower reason to fight that why am why should i kill those people we are not worried about this people or that people or anybody we are worried about dharma being established we are worried about establishing dharma and making you know uh, proper administration possible so he actually became very weak and he said gandhivam sramsade hastad oh the gandhiva is falling from my hands but actually he throws it down he just kept it down it is then that he admits he was so much into anxiety he was not able to solve his own problem and he was so much confused uh, and at that time he said what shall i do he asked krishna you know he admits his perplexity and he says what shall i do krishna now hmm? and now i am your disciple shishyaste ham shadhyam aham tam pravan and soul surrender to you please tell me what i must do this was arjuna's question if arjuna had not asked this question krishna would not have spoken bhagavad gita and we would not have been discussing this we would be missing a major 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 information uh, about the vedic literature about krishna krishna himself spoke right? 
So Krishna then as soon as Arjuna submitted, then Krishna took the role as the teacher at the spiritual master. Sorry, one minute. Okay. Krishna took he, he took the position as uh, the spiritual master of Arjuna. And spiritual he took a different role. Previously, Arjuna was uh, dealing with Krishna as a friend, but now Krishna has taken the role as a spiritual master. In that moment, Krishna assumes the role of the spiritual master and he proceeds to enlighten Arjuna. He tells Arjuna, Ashochyan and Ashochastam, Rajna Vadam Shabhashase, Rasu Nagada, Somscha, Nan Shoshanti Pandita. This is the first sloka that Krishna spoke in Bhagavad Gita, where he chastised Arjuna. He said, Arjuna Krishna said, Oh Arjuna, you are talking like a learned man, but you are you are lamenting for something that is not worth lamenting for. So this way he started. He reminds him of his immediate social duty, Varna Dharma, as a warrior prince. But then, more than that, he was in most in, more importantly, he explains what is the eternal duty, nature, Sanadana Dharma of every living being. In relationship with the supreme living being god actually krishna took opportunity to explain the reality to arjuna arjuna was anyway perplexed he said i don't know anything you know i'm totally worried krishna i'm totally miss i'm totally uh, what you call you know confused what to do krishna therefore is it i'm just becoming <coughs> Your disciple Krishna, please tell me. Karpanya dosho pakadasa bhava uchami tam dharma sammo rajeta. This Karpanya dosha is killing me. Krishna, Krishna, please tell me. And Krishna is talking to you. He took this opportunity to speak about the Nanana dharma. And then he, the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita transcends Arjuna's battlefield dilemma. The battlefield Arjuna was in dilemma, but that is transcended by the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Similarly, our problems, our issues in this material world will be transcended by Krishna's advice in Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, we must learn Bhagavad Gita. Thus, Krishna's words, though set against the historical background, transcends Arjuna's battlefield dilemma. And speak for the benefit of all souls. Krishna, when he spoke, he spoke not only to Arjuna. Krishna spoke to everybody for all souls, for all of his parts and persons. It was beneficial when Krishna started speaking. So Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita and all encompassing knowledge is coming directly from the original source, Krishna himself. So one second. This basically because Krishna knows those who are in the material world, they have forgotten their eternal nature. They have forgotten their ultimate goal, ultimate goal of life and their eternal relationship with Krishna. Then, so our eternal nature is our soul and our ultimate goal of life is to reach Krishna and our eternal relationship with Krishna is also we forgot. We are eternally related to Krishna. So therefore Krishna decided, okay, now Arjuna is in dilemma. Let me speak to him. So he started speaking Bhagavad Gita. And this Bhagavad Gita was spoken in three sections. You know, we saw for each chapter, four section, three section, five section, like that, right? And now we are seeing entire Bhagavad Gita in three sections. 18 chapters are there. First six chapters are known as section one, second six chapters are known as section two, and third section is chapter 13 to 18, the, the third section. So all of these sections have six, six chapters. The, in, the first, in the first section there are six chapters, second section there are six chapters, and third section there are six chapters. Now we are going to see section Y, section by section. So we can easily finish this. 
I think one to six, you already finished to some extent. Last time, then again, I'm recapitulating because you may have forgotten. Because I was just rushing through too much information in the, uh, you know, it was too much information I was trying to convey. So I, we made it better this time so that, you know, we'll be able to speak slowly and you will be able to, uh, you know, relate with all this, with what you have heard in the classes. In the first six chapters, Krishna is putting the basement of knowledge. What is the basement of knowledge? The basement of knowledge is about ourselves, about living entity, about Atma. Krishna speaks about us. Krishna speaks about Jivatmas. But Krishna says we are in amnesia. We are in total forgetfulness. We don't know. We are thinking we are this body. And this section one will come in detail. And the second section says, Krishna talks about uh, himself. What is God? How to understand him? And how to go back to him? What is our connection with Krishna? Everything is about Krishna. What is Krishna's connection with us? What is Krishna's connection with this material world? And what is the purpose of us coming into this material world? And what do we get by going back to Krishna? All that is clear. And Krishna is giving a complete job interview. Means Krishna is telling you what you are supposed to do. What is your actual action which you are not doing because of which you are in anxiety? And Krishna is explaining us. How we, have, we are supposed to, there comes, you know, Jnana Yoga, Ashtang, uh, sorry, Jnana Yoga, uh, called uh, Most Confidential Knowledge, all these different chapters, Vishwarupa, everything is coming. And Krishna is explaining to us what we are supposed to do as Atma, as his part and parcel. So that Krishna is giving in 7 to 12 chapters, section 2. In section 3, Krishna is talking about the material world. Krishna is talking about Prakriti, material world, and Prakriti, the spiritual world. He's talking about that also to some extent. And that the material world is talking so much about three modes of material nature and all that. And Krishna is explaining about the nature of the prison house. The material world is like a prison house. Krishna explains in the third section. So we'll see one by one, section by section, we will see. Okay. In section one, about you or about us, about Jivatma, Krishna is speaking. In the first chapter, there are six chapters. If you just want to know what is there in the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita, you can say in one word, lamentation of Arjuna. Arjuna is thinking, you know, I am not I don't want to fight. It is better for me to fail in this war than to be successful. So Arjuna is in confusion. Arjuna is in dilemma. So therefore he is lamenting. That is the first chapter. What is in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita? We can easily say the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita deals with our real identity. Who we are. I am not this body. I am spirit soul. I am not mind. I am not intelligence. I am not any of these things. I am actually soul. I am part and parcel of Krishna. Therefore, whatever we may take seriously, our material life, the material life, we have to leave and go. Just like we discussed how when a child is playing with his friends, you know, how a child when he is playing with his friends, what he does is, you know, he, they will make, uh, they will make, uh, uh, you know, uh, chapati, they make rice, they make this, that, out of mud, out of, uh, uh, you know, small, small stones, out of so many things. You know, out of cut uh, leaves, flowers, we make so many things and we will play. And when we are hungry, we leave everything and we run to mother. And mother will say, wash your hands and come, eat your food. Then again you can go and receive your play. Similarly, in the material world, you know, suddenly you can see, you know, COVID has come. How many people passed away from this material world? And people had so many, it's not that nobody had anything to do in this world. Those who passed away, especially even youngsters, you know, or middle-aged people, 
they have so much of responsibility to look after their wife, their children, you know, they look after the, you know, the children had to study and the elderly people, they had to, you know, also guide the uh, grandchildren and their children. Everybody is doing something as long as they live in this material world, right? All of us will do something. So, but when Krishna calls, when time comes, you have to leave everything as it is and go. That's all. Just like that, you have to leave and go. Not even one minute extra you will get. You are destined to time of passing away, you will definitely leave this body and go. That shows that there is something more important than looking after our so-called duties and so-called things. This is also important and looking after uh, the needs of the soul is also very important. So we are actually not this body. We are actually spirit soul. And when the soul leaves the body, the body cannot do any function, cannot see, cannot smell, cannot taste, cannot hear, cannot touch. Nothing can be done because the soul is what was doing all these things. Okay, so this is very important. Second chapter deals with you are not this body lesson, you are spirit soul lesson, you are part and parcel of Krishna. That is a lesson. And then third chapter, what is it? What is it mentioned in the third chapter? If you want to say in one sentence, our duty or job. That's our constitutional position constitutional position. Our duty. What is our duty? It's called Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga is our duty. We spoke about Karma Yogis, kar uh, Karmis, Vikarmis, right? We spoke about all these three different classes of people. Uh, karmi, Vikarmi, Karma Yogi, or Akarmi. Karma Yogi means those who have established connection with those who are establishing connection with Krishna through their job, through their duty, through performance of work, they are called karma yogis. <clears throat> and by doing that work, they are able to identify and understand their constitutional position as a servant of Krishna. That is a duty, that is a job of a living entity. So this is very important. Now you have next fourth chapter describes what is it mentioned about yoga. Our duty was described in the third chapter and how to perform, how to carry out the duty was informed in the fourth chapter about the knowledge, jnana yoga, to carry out our duty is very really important. So there it is mentioned that Krishna is saying that we should simply go and surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Surrender to a bona fide spiritual master, he will tell you who Krishna is. And he will tell you the process of devotional service. The process to reach Krishna. How to reach Krishna will be explained by him. In the fifth chapter, Krishna explains about peace formula. Peace formula is <coughs> uh, uh, Krishna is explaining what is a peace formula. The result of applying the chapter, the information about what we have received from second, third, and fourth chapter is mentioned in the fifth chapter. Bhuktaram Jatabasam Sarvaloga Maheshwara Suhudam Sarvabhudanam Yatvamam Shadi Murchari. That was a shloka mentioned. Peace, you will get peace. Bhuktaram Jatabasam means he is the supreme enjoyer of all that activities that we are supposed to do, we are doing. Sarvaloka Maheshwara is the supreme lord of all the three worlds. Suhudam Sarva Bhudanam is a friend of all. He is a friend of all. This is how he wants us to know him. That's how we are supposed to know him. So, if you know him, Krishna says like this, then you will be Nyatvamam Shantam Knowing this will become very peaceful. He is a supreme enjoyer. I am not the enjoyer. Krishna is the enjoyer. Krishna is the owner of everything. And he is the friend of all immunities. There is no question of any enviousness to anybody else because everybody is Krishna's part and parcel. So this is the information in the fifth chapter. The sixth chapter tells you about thinking, about mind, you know, how the mind is our enemy and how the mind is our friend and how we can make our mind our friend.
how to avoid making our own enemy within ourselves, within our own mind. It's very dangerous. We cannot have a peaceful life by doing that. Okay. So, become a bhakti yogi and attain perfection. That's what yogi namaka sarvesha madhya deyananda ratmana sadha van bhajave yomam sami yukta damoguta yogi namaka sarvesha madhya deyananda ratmana Andaratmana in the mind, you always think about me in your mind. And that is Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga means always remembering Krishna and never forgetting Krishna. This is Bhakti Yoga. Yes, that is the perfection of life. Krishna is always. So Prabhupada is commenting on these six chapters. It is very worthwhile to see Prabhupada comments. You know, just here and there he speaks about in the classes, how it is very important. Bhagavad Gita is how Bhagavad Gita is very important. In the first six chapters of Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada explains, in the first six chapters of Bhagavad Gita, the living entity has been described as non-material spirit soul capable of elevating himself to, to self-realization by different types of yogas. So, this is the first six chapters explained. And then he says, the first six chapters of Bhagavad Gita, the knower of the body, the living entity, and the position by which he can understand the Supreme Lord are described. And then he says that in the first chapters of Bhagavad Gita, stress was given to devotional service. Yogi Namaka Sarvesha, of all yogis or transcendentalists, one who always think of me within himself is best. Krishna explains this. And then we'll go to the sixth, second section. Section. In section two, what Krishna says, the seventh chapter. If you want to know what is mentioned in the seventh chapter, in one word, Krishna is saying, Krishna is our real master. Actually, he is our master. Tashrunu. Krishna says, you just listen to me, Arjuna. Huh? Actually, by performing devotional service to me, you can be very happy. Krishna is saying is our real, there are there is Maya in this material world. And even this Maya will give side to a devotee. And Maya will guide you to Krishna if you are surrendered to Krishna fully. Maybe Hesha Mamai Mamaya Gurataya. So Mamaya Gurataya Krishna says that you know in the eighth chapter Krishna explains, you work for me. Then you will come to me. <clears throat> so, so therefore the 8th chapter says Krishna, uh, that you work for me. Yeah? Uh, Krishna says Yamyam Vabhis Maran Bhavam Tajityande Kalayavaram Tam Tamayi Vedi Kaundeya Sudhatat Bhava Bhavita. That means Krishna is saying that in the time of death whatever state of consciousness you are in you will reach that consciousness that that stage Therefore, if you think of me, you will come back to me. So, thinking of me is as equal to equal to working for him, actually. Krishna is explaining, it's called Parama Pada Prapti. That means, you can achieve the shelter, the supreme ultimate shelter by um, performing devotional service to me. In the ninth chapter, Krishna explains about Bhakti. He says that Bhakti is the password to open the door. Which door? That is the, the, the key is given. Ninth chapter, if you remember, the, name, the chapter was named Most Confidential Knowledge. And that most confidential knowledge, Krishna says, is that at the end of the chapter, the final shloka says, Man mana bhava, mad bhakto, mad vyaji, maam namaskar. Always four things he says. Man mana bhava, always think about me. Mad bhakta, you become my devotee. That means you work for me. Mad yaji, you worship me. That means you should know that I am the supreme personality. But there is no shelter beyond me. So that's why I say worship me. Mad yaji, maam namaskar, you perform, you surrender, you pay your obeisances to me. Pay your obeisances to me. Namaskaram to me. Maam Namaskar. Then, Maam Eva Yeshusi Kaundaya. You will definitely come back to me only, O Arjuna. 
do not fear, don't worry. So this is the chavi, this is the, you know, the key, the password to open the door of bhakti, password to open the door of Golodha Vrindavan is given in the ninth chapter. And therefore he says, he says, it is very, very confidential knowledge. Rajavidya, Rajabuhyam, Pavitramitam Uttamam. This is Rajavidya, this is the king of knowledge. Rajabuhyam, this is most confidential. Pavitram, this is very, very pure. Means there's no, absolutely no uh, wrong things in this. No, there is no uh, illusion. It is our reality. It is not life. Pavitram, the Uttamam is the best knowledge that I am giving you. Pratikshagamam, you can straight away understand what is being spoken in action. Actually. So that's a password to open the door of Bhakti. The 10th chapter Krishna explains about devotees. How Krishna reciprocates with his devotees. That Krishna says, if you are not able to understand me, Rasavaham Apsukaundaya. You can see me in the taste of water. You can see me in the light of sun. You can see me in the, you know, fragrance of the fragrance in the air. You can see me everywhere, Krishna says. Wherever there is most powerful thing, it's all my manifestations. Krishna is explaining. He says that also. But of all yajnas, I am chanting the holy name of Krishna. So this way Krishna explains the relationship with his devotees. It's called Vibhuti Yoga. And what Krishna is saying? Krishna is saying all these things I am manifesting only for the sake of you. My parts and parcels, all living entities. And then in the 11th chapter Krishna is showing his universal form. Three forms is showing. He is showing two-handed form. He is showing four-handed form. And is showing universal form. And thus is declaring to the world that the whole universe is filled. The whole universe is within me, actually, within Krishna. So this is 11th chapter. It was uh, such a long and wonderful chapter that we have read. And we have seen many, many things in the Vishuddha right? The, whole, the universal form of Krishna. The 12th chapter, Krishna explains Bhakti Yoga, devotional service. And he says, how to, who is dear to me? He explains how to become dear to Krishna. I am sure we all want to become dear to Krishna because he is dear to all of us. And so, therefore, we all want to become dear to Krishna. Therefore, what happens when Krishna himself explains how we can become dear to Krishna? So, Krishna is the absolute truth. You know? Bhagavad Gita is son of God, spoken by Krishna, who is Krishna, who is God himself. Bhagavad Gita, Krishna's position is made very clear. Uh, in the 10th chapter, Krishna explains, Aham sarvasya prabhavo matta sarvam pravartade. I am the source of everything. From me, the entire universe, entire creation flows. And another shloka he says, is that matta paradaram nanyat yadidasti dhanam chaya. There is no truth superior to me. And then he says in uh, 15th chapter, Sarva Sichaham Mati Sanni Vishto Matas Vedan Jnana Vodhamcha Vedesha Sarve Rahame Vedya Vedanta Garat Vedani Deva Chaham. He says that by all the Vedas I am to be known because I am the compiler of the Vedas. So Krishna is the supreme absolute truth is established in the, in the second section. And Arjuna is praying in the 10th chapter. Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitram, Paramam, Bhavan. You are the Supreme Brahman. You are the ultimate, the absolute truth, the eternal divine person. You are the primeval Lord, God, and transcendental and original. Tamadeva Purusha Purana, Adityavarnam Tamasastu Parastar. You are the original personality, the Godhead, doing everything. You are all that is knowledge. So these are the conclusions of the second section. So Shri Prabhupada is commenting on the second section. Prabhupada's comments from his classes. Uh, I thought that's very important to note because we will not miss the essence. 
So in the next Prabhupada, I hope everybody knows Prahupada is uh, the founder of Acharya of Iskand movement. We have we seen him and we are reading his books. Okay. So in the next six chapters, Prabhupada is explaining. Means the seven to twelve. Next six chapters, pure devotional service and its nature and activity were discussed. In the middle six chapters of Bhagavad Gita, the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the relationship between individual soul and the super soul is in regard to devotional service are described. And he says the superior position of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the subordinate position of the individual soul are definitely defined in these chapters, I mean to 12. Then Prabhupada again says the living entities are subordinate under all circumstances, but in their forgetfulness they are suffering. And then he says, when enlightened by pious activities, they approach the Supreme Lord in different capacities as the distressed, those in want of money, the inquisitive, and those in search of knowledge. That is also described. These are the descriptions of uh, uh, then the word idam viditva indicates that one should understand the instruction given by Sri Krishna in this chapter and the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita. One should try to understand these chapters not by scholarship or mental speculation, but by hearing them in association with the devotees. And he says, chapters 7 through 12 are the essence of Bhagavad Gita. The first six, the last six chapters are like coverings of the middle six chapters which are especially protected by the Lord. So this middle 12, ch six chapters are very, very important. If one is fortunate enough to understand Bhagavad Gita, especially these six middle six chapters in the association of devotees, not by speculation or by you know, reading some commentaries in association of devotees, then his life at once becomes glorified beyond all penances sacrifices, charity, speculation, etc. For one can achieve all the result of these activities simply by Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada explains. Simply by performing devotional service to Krishna, one can achieve the result of every other processes. So in that sense, this is section 2. Then now, section 3, we are going into section 3. Krishna speaks about Prakriti, the prison or the prison house. The 13th chapter, Krishna explains Paramatma. The lawyer, I'm sorry for the spelling mistake. Lawyer. Paramatma. Why he is mentioned as lawyer is because he is actually with us, he is witnessing. He is a witness and he commands. And he actually reasons why, what is our, what is our real aim in life. If our aim is for sense gratification, then Krishna provides suitable body for that type of sense gratification that is interested in. So, therefore, Krishna is called Krishna is Paramatma, he is also called a lawyer. In the third the 14th chapter, Krishna has spent the three gunas, the prison bars. Right? Uh, we spoke about yellow, uh, green, and blue, right? Yellow, red, and sorry, yellow. Red and blue, or green, red and blue. Green or yellow represents Satyaguna, red represents uh, Rajaguna, and blue represents Tamaguna. He explains we dealt in so depth about uh, three gunas Satyaguna, Rajaguna, and Tamaguna. And the 15th chapter says about the Vedas, and he says how. The material world is, an, is a topsy a tree that is topsy turvy. The roots are on top and the branches on the bottom. Explained how the material world, everything is topsy turvy. And then how we accept the material body, how we how we transmigrate from one body to the other was explained in the 15th chapter. And then in the other thing, uh, sorry. How from one body to the other? It's like the wind is carrying the aroma 
the, the, our gunas are carrying us, our thoughts, our mentality, our subtle body is carrying us to the next body. It was explained very nicely in the 15th chapter. The 16th chapter deals with divine and demoniac qualities. And I hope you remember we discussed Liti and Aditi, the mothers of uh, Devas and Asuras. Uh, two types of inmates of this material world, divine and demoniac. Two types of you know people are there in the material world. Either one is demoniac or one is divine. And then the 17th chapter Krishna explains, you know, how to the key to escape from the prison house. Last time we escaped, we, we uh, spoke about the ninth chapter. That was the password. Now it is a key to escape from the prison house. If somebody is giving you the key, you know, you are inside the prison, somebody is giving you the key to open it. Why not, you know, you can just take it, open it and get out. We don't have to, so much trouble can be saved. Right? So Krishna says, Om Tat Sat. Here Om represents Krishna. Tat means activities that are performed without, detach, without attachment. And Sat means that can be offered to Krishna. Activities that are uh, activities that are performed without attachment to the results that can be offered to the Supreme Lord Mo Krishna. That was explained in the 17th chapter. And the 18th chapter explained surrender to Krishna. Krishna comes to rescue. He says, Mashcha, don't worry. You just surrender to me. I will take care of you, money. All these 17 chapters, if you have not understood, don't worry. You just surrender to me. I will take care of you. Krishna is saying, don't worry. So you are so desperate. Krishna is so desperate to take us back home, to take us back home, back to Bali. Okay. And then chapters, you know, Shri Prabhupada comments on this 13 to 18 chapters. Now starting with the 13th chapter, how the living entity comes into contact with the material nature and how he is delivered by the Supreme Lord through the different methods of fruitive activities, cultivation of knowledge and the discharge of devotional service are explained. We are we have come into the material world and how by doing these three methods, the methods of fruit activities, cultivation of knowledge, and discharge of devotion service. That is Karma Ganda, Jnana Ganda, and Upasana Kanda. That is a sprite. Then we spoke about Prabhupada says that although the living entity is completely different from material body, he somehow becomes related. This also is a sprint. Yeah. We get related to our body somehow or other. Right? It's also a sprint. How? Remember through the three modes of material nature. And then it explains about in the third, six chapters, knowledge, renunciation, the activities of material nature and transcendental nature and devotional service that is right. And it's very, uh, you know, so many shlokas, you know, so many things we learn. And Prabhupada has made everything in one sentence. It's in the second, the third six chapters, knowledge, renunciation, the activities of material nature, and transcendental nature, and devotional service were described. And he says, it was concluded that all acts should be performed in conjunction with the Supreme Lord. Represented by the word Om Tat Sat, which indicates Vishnu, the Supreme Person. The third part of Bhagavad Gita has shown that devotional service and nothing else is the ultimate purpose of life. This has been established by citing past Acharyas and Brahma Sutra, Vedanta Sutras. Krishna himself is citing Vedanta Sutra. He is the person who wrote Vedanta Sutra, but then Brahma Sutra Badais Chaiva, Krishna is saying. You know, it is Vinishita, it has been determined by the Brahma Sutras, by the Vedas, by the Puranas. Krishna himself is referring to the Shastra. So we should refer to Bhagavad Gita when we speak. We should not simply speculate. All these things we are talking based on the knowledge given by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. None of these are our own speculations. Okay? Prabhupada is giving this knowledge, ultimate knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. Certain impersonal is considered. Impersonalist means, you know, some people who think the God is not a person. It's impersonalist. They consider themselves 
to have a monopoly on the knowledge of Vedanta Sutra. But actually, the Vedanta Sutra is meant for understanding devotional service. The Lord Himself is the composer of the very Veda. Devotional service is the objective. There is a splendid Bhagavad Gita itself. Krishna Himself is giving. Krishna himself is giving uh, explanation to what he has mentioned in the Shastras, the Vedanta Sutra. And how anybody can interpret it in any other way. Prabhupada says that Bhagavad Gita is finished in 17 chapters. Then where do we have 18 chapter? In spite of hearing all these instructions given up to in chapter 17, we may end up in a situation where we are not able to fully, com fully comprehend the Vedas. We forgot the key words. You know, the key words we mentioned earlier. And we forgot about all these key words. So, we are in trouble. Because of that, we are in trouble, actually. In spite of hearing all this, we forget because we forget the key words. You know, these are the key words that I have mentioned earlier. We'll see those key words once again. So, because we forgot the key words, we are in trouble. Okay. Then Krishna, the lawyer, comes to our rescue. He says, Sarva dharma and paridyajya, mame gamsaranam praja. We forget everything, we are in mess. But then Krishna is coming, the time of examination. Come on, this is the answer, don't forget it. Is so merciful. So to go through the uh, key words of first chapter, uh, first to six chapters, the key word of first chapter is the lamentation of Arjuna. Right? You can immediately remember what all there in first chapter. The key, the key word of second chapter is our real identity. She explains, I am not this body, I am spiritual. The key word of third chapter is or duty or job, constitutional. Or constitutional duty, that means our original duty, our original job. When we are not doing our original job or our original duty, then we are in trouble. Therefore, that's a karma yoga. And then the fourth chapter is about knowledge, about carrying out our duty, how to carry out. In the fifth chapter, the key word is peace. The result of applying two, three, and four chapters. You can see the last shloka of this chapter. This is Shanti Murchari is mentioned. The peace. The sixth chapter, the key word is thinking about mind. You know, how our mind can be our enemy, how our mind can be our uh, friend. If our mind is our friend, we become Bhakti Yogi and attain perfection. If we are enemy, our mind is enemy to us, and he will take us through so many different problems. The key word of seventh chapter is Krishna is our real master. And eighth one is you work for me, you will come to me. Ninth one is Bhakti, the password to open the door. Number tenth chapter is devotees, about devotees, how Krishna has separated these devotees. Eleventh chapter discuss about Krishna's forms, three aspects of his form. Paramatma, Sorry, the four-handed form, Vishrupa and two-handed And uh, the twelfth uh, chapter describes the key word is devotional service, Bhakti Yoga. How to become dear to Krishna is mentioned there. And in the thirteenth chapter, Paramatma is described, the lawyer. The fourteenth chapter, three gunas are described, present bars. And the fifteenth chapter, the the Key word is the Vedas. Yes, he's the companion of the Vedas, he says. And by following this Vedas, we can stop transmigrating from one body to the other. This escape plan. How to escape from this material world is given in that. Krishna has made this prison and Krishna has brought us into this prison. And now Krishna is giving us the password to get out of it. And Krishna is actually giving us the key to get out of it. Escape plan is given by Krishna himself. It's like the government himself is telling the thief, you escape like this, like this. So Krishna is saying, Krishna is saying the escape plan, 15th chapter. 
That's why when somebody is dead, we go to a place to visit a person who passed away. We see in front of, sit in front of the dead body and we chant 15th chapter. And by chanting that, the Atma, who is all knowledgeable, Atma will understand the escape plan. Maybe escape. So it's called escape plan. The 16th chapter is two types of inmates, divine and demoniac. 17th chapter, the key word is Om Tatsar. Key to escape from present house. It's a key. <coughs> Plan was given in 15th and the key is given here. And in the 9th chapter, uh, what, do you, what, do you, what, do you, what was it? The 9th chapter described a password to open the door. Right? All that is there. Now, 18th chapter is surrender to Krishna. Krishna comes to our rescue, says. So therefore, Sarada to Krishna is the key word, password for 18th chapter. If you know these words, you can easily remember what is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita. Very, very nice description. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Prabhuji, can you please tell a little more about... Uh... Paramatma and the lawyer concept? Ah, Paramatma and the lawyer concept. <laughs> Paramatma is like a witness. Upadrishta, Anumantaja, Bharta, Bhokta, Maheshwara. And actually, Paramatma is there with us throughout. And he is the person who is actually uh, knowing what we are doing in this material world. Krishna knows as Paramatma. And then, the Paramatma is guiding us, just like the lawyer. When the lawyer is actually, you know, guiding us not to say this, not to say that, you present like this. So Paramatma is actually presenting within the, is actually monitoring from within the heart. Do like this, do like this. As the uh, prompting Paramatma is doing from the heart. And he's actually, he is not coming with us to put us in trouble. He's actually come, coming with us to, yes, you know, uh, Save ourselves from the trouble. So he is actually uh, advising us how to get out of this material world. So sometimes we feel this is right. Okay, we have hundred percent surety this is right. It means Paramatma is telling us go this way. So Paramatma is actually guiding us. He is guiding us to success. Actually, I had one more question. Yeah, tell me. Um, it's not a question. It's kind of, I was wondering. Yeah. Okay, I have a friend uh, who is actually a ISKCON devotee. Yeah. And used to chant and, you know, you know, generally ISKCON devotee. But I was very uh, upset to her, hear that uh, she's gone into depression. Oh, my. Mm. Okay. She's on medication. That's what mm. I heard. And, uh, you know, I was wondering, uh, and whenever I used to talk to her, just to always talk about Krishna, 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 and you know, always think about chanting and all those things. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering why does such things happen? See, the point is uh, sometimes it's very, very uh, you know, subtle thing to understand. So actually, where do we live? We say we are living in so and so place. I am living in say I am living in Sri Rangam. I am living in a uh, 800 square feet flat and uh, I am sitting here with this, this facilities. I am having this car, I am having this computer, I am having this bike, I am having this, that. So generally we identify ourselves with uh, our possessions, our house, our native, our land, birth land, language, everything. But actually where do we live? We are actually living inside this body. We are exactly in this body. We are actually living inside our mind. So our house is our mind. The soul is housed inside the mind. So we can have narrow mind or we can have narrow house or big house. And no tax, has, no house tax has to be given. And there is no electricity, water charge has to be given. We live in that house of mind. But only thing is that mind has to be 
uh, made friend. Otherwise, living inside will be very, very difficult for us. Sometimes, when we take up Krishna consciousness and we get guided by, uh, you know, devotees and we get, we get guided by the spiritual master and, but at the same time, we may still have so much attachment in the material world. And depression is nothing but the symptom of attachment. You chant Hare Krishna Mahamudra, the attachment will not go automatically. You will get power, you will get to understand this is attachment, I should not be attached to this. So that attachment, sometimes people will fully take up that attachment for some reason. Just like, you know, Vishma, Vishma Dev. Vishma Dev was one of the Mahajanas. There was nothing that he did not know in the Shastra. He was a great soul. But where did he fight with him? Which side he joined? He joined the Adharma. He joined Duryodhana's side. Why? It is so disturbing. Actually, as you said, so disturbing to me from the childhood, from the time I heard about Mahabharata and all that. And uh, I was very disturbing to me, like such a great person like Bhishma Dev, why he should fight for Kauravas? Whatever reason it may be, they should, he should actually fight for, you know, like, you know, stand for Pandavas. He should say, hey, Dhritarashtra, get out of this place. You know, you people have no qualification. Yudhishthira, you come, sit down and roll the ink down. He should say, they should follow. Because he was avowed to protect Hastinapura. But in spite, instead of that, these people, unscrupulous people like the Yodhana, they have made him so confused. And, uh, you know, so much confused that he was standing on the other side of Krishna. He is a great devotee of Krishna. The proof is that when, uh, when he was lying down, waiting for Uttarayana Uttara to come, descend, that time, Krishna personally went to meet him. Went to meet him and consoled him. And he just went and spoke, stood in front of him. And Vishnu spoke, Vishnu Sahasranama, which we are, you know, celebrated even today. Whoever is able to listen to Vishnu Sahasranama at the time of death, you will definitely go back to Krishna. Just like Krishna is present in front of you. Such a great person as Bhishma Dev, he fought on the other side. He did not know that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. No, he knew very well. But then he gave more importance for his promises. He promised to his father, I will be with the people who are ruling Hastinapura. I will protect the people who are... He did not say, I will protect Hastinapura. He said, I will protect the people who are ruling the Hastinapura. He took... Uh, advantage of his Sachinta Murthy means like, you know, uh, death at his wish. So that he mistook actually. He took that and misused it. And he thought, now Dhritarashtra is sitting in the throne of Hastinapura, therefore I should work for him. Rather, he should have thought I should work for Dharma. And Hastinapura should be ruled by people who are Dharmic. He was confused, right? So sometimes, Poor devotees, they get confused because of some influence. Maybe their parents, maybe their you know, husband, maybe their children, maybe their friends, whomever they are giving soul to, sold completely towards them. So when they say they cannot be without listening and they are not able to come to Krishna's service, they are, you know, uh, pulled and pushed between these two ends, materialism and spiritualism. Kundi Devi had such a problem. He said, Dridam Pandushu Vrishnishu. Krishna, please tear this connection with Pandus and Vrishnis. Vrishnis are as our husband's side, Vasudeva's side. And Pandus, sorry, Pandus are husband's side, Vrishnis are parent's side. You know, this attachment towards these two sides, I want to cut off. This attachment is the cause of my problem. And if I am simply able to understand you and surrender to you, completely, without any other consideration, I'll be saved. Kundi Devi is saying that in, in her teachings, in her Kundi Devi's prayers, Bhagavatam. So Kundi Devi was in trouble. She was also thinking, Chai, why did I? Why at all I was born in this material world? So many problems. Kundi Devi was also thinking. But then all this depression, sometimes, you know, the depression is good for devotees sometimes. 
they depend more on Krishna and to Krishna. So Krishna Kuddhidevi is saying, give us Santhuda Shashwat, Tatra Tatra Jagat Guru, Krishna, please give me more and more miseries so that I will remember you at that time. Because in my good days, I never remember you. But in my bad days, bad times come, you always with me. And I'm always remembering you. <clears throat> Therefore, let all these vipat, vipat means all these you know, catastrophes come upon me so that I'll be able to remember you. Uh, whatever you know, goodness, whatever enjoyment you have in this material world, you know, and all that is temporary. Ultimately, that thing will fall upon you. Death, the point is there, you know, and the time will be totally you know, smashed. So, Kunti Devi is saying, give me more and more trouble. One on side. On the other side, you know, she was actually very much worried. So many secrets she had to keep, and because of it, so many problems. And she had to see his both sons having equal talent fight each other. You know, she cannot wish both of them, you know, success or death. Oh, so much of difficulty she underwent. And all that, with the reward of all that difficulty, is she had Krishna with her. Similarly, this Mataji, this girl also, you know. Maybe Krishna is giving her a hard time so that she will surrender more and more to him. Or maybe she is enjoying that. Like Kuchela, Sudama Vipra is a great devotee and people were people were laughing at him. Why are you doing this chanting? You are such a poor man. You, have not, you, know, you don't even have a food to eat in, in time. And you are simply calling God, God. What do you get out of calling God? You are only suffering. Many people, you know, told him that. But then he was not bothered. But inside his mind, he was enjoying uh, peace. He was enjoying happiness. He was enjoying bliss in relation with Krishna. So many, many devotees like we can see this. Uh, you know, sometimes devotees get so depressed. But then the success is that when while depression, they are able to understand and take shelter of Krishna. That is greatness. That is Okay, Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Prabhu Ji. Very, very Hare. nice. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Yeah, Varayani. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, I didn't understand. You didn't understand. What is it that you didn't understand? Yes. Prison, prison house. Or... Ah, prison house. Oh, this material world is a prison house. Oh, I said that. One minute, eh? Krishna. Sorry, Krishna. Narayani was asking me some question. What was that? I forgot. Prison house, right? Prison house is meant for prison house is meant for whom it is meant for people who don't follow any law any law of the land. Prison house is meant for that. Therefore, those who are not able to follow Krishna's instructions, they are sent to the material world, which is compared to prison house sometimes. Sometimes it is compared to uh, the university. University we go for, for learning, right? So we learn. And some places it is compared to prison house. Because the prison, you know, we are bound by the rope of three modes of material nature. The prison house. So material world is Dukkhalayam. Asha Krishna explains material world is Dukkhalayam Asha Shrutam. Material world is a non-permanent place. Temporary place. Which is a, you know, a place of Dukkhalayam. The Kalayam means the place of misery. So therefore it is sometimes compared to as a prison house. Uji, how can you say that three gunas means prison bars? No, just like, uh, you know, we are trying to understand how we are tied up, right? Prison, in the prison bars are putting us under, you know, we are put behind bars, right? The bars are stopping us from coming out. 
Similarly, the three gunas are stopping us, stopping us from surrender to Krishna. We have to somehow or other break this rope or the bars, present bars. Then we can surrender to Krishna. How to do that? Krishna himself is giving uh, information. And then was, Rajat was asking, Prabhuji, can you please keep the timing for future sessions at 7.30 as it is more convenient? Okay, sure. Everybody feels so? How many of you feel we should have at 7.30 to 8.30? Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. And you can just, uh, uh, in the chat, you can ty type yes. That will be good. In the chat, you can say yes. What does it mean, lamentation of Arjuna? Arjuna was lamenting, right? Arjuna was crying. Oh, I don't want to fight this war. And my people are there. My cousins are there. My friends are there. You know, my guru is there. Grandfather is there. How can I fight? I don't want to fight. Just cry. Krishna, it is better for me to go to forest and lead a life of mendicant than to fight this war and be successful. I don't want to be successful. I want to I want to just become a failure in this war so that I will not have to kill all these people. So that was the lamentation of Arjuna. Right? Prabhuji. Yeah. I doubt. Everybody is saying yes. Okay. We will next time we will have from Saturday we can have. Every Saturday can we have? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Oh, one person, Narayani, is saying also 8.30. You know, no, Prabhuji, you should say. Uh, out of so many people, only Narayani is saying no. So try to make it 7.30. Yeah, we will, you can leave by 8.30. I will finish the class by 8.30. You can leave, right? Narayani. Or whatever you have other questions, you can uh, communicate over the WhatsApp. Because maybe people will come back. Everybody can come back home. After work, after studies at 7.30 only. It's half an hour, doesn't matter, right? I'll finish everything by 8.30, class by 8.30, and then you can leave. And you can ask questions. Yeah. Right, Krishna, any understanding? Yeah? J of his villain. J? I'm not able to hear you. Yeah. Last class, it says like uh, it says that Krishna was born in a jail of his village where his parents were kidnapped. Krishna was born in jail, eh? <laughs> that is that is Krishna's pastime. He could have born anywhere. He was born in jail to show that Devaki and Vasudeva, even though they were killed, they are not. Killed. <laughs> And the father and mother of Krishna. What are three aspects, Prabhuji, in the 11th chapter? The three aspects are three forms of Krishna. Two hands of Krishna, four hands of Krishna, and Vishnu of Krishna. Many, many hands of Krishna. Then, Saturday is okay. Very good. Is Saturday okay? Can everybody say okay? Or not okay means we'll decide like that. Because Sunday, Not okay, Prabhuji. you can increase that time before 7 30 because people will come back from work and get tired. No, so decrease the time, Prabhu. Okay, because um, uh, Sundays we have uh, programs in the temple. So far, uh, Sundays lockdown was there, there was no program, but many many people will come here on Sunday. So, therefore, at that time, we cannot come and sit in front of the computer. They will come inside and they will ask questions. When they come directly, we cannot be without responding. So we thought we will make it on a Saturday so that you will be free to discuss. We can discuss any amount of time I can spend. No issue. I will not keep anything on Saturday. Saturday for only ex exceptionally for our group. Only we will have the time. Right? Um, Guruji, can you please see the question in the chat box I have written? What was that? What does it mean? Our real identity, right? Yes, our, real identity, our real identity is who are we? Who are we? Whether I am body or soul, 
our real and uh, we are thinking we are this body that is our thinking but our real identity is i am not this body i am spirit soul right yes prabhu and one more how can we say the vedas means uh, escape plan escape plan that's the 15th chapter escape plan is krishna is explaining how to escape from this material world the whole theme of 15th chapter is that krishna is saying i am in everybody's heart and indra rudani maya and sitting in the heart i am guiding everybody and krishna is saying simply by understanding the material world and the spiritual world say like uh, in the 15th chapter krishna is explaining that this material world is a reflection of a uh, perverted reflection of the spiritual world and if you are able to understand this is only a reflection the real thing is the spiritual world then we can actually start thinking about the spiritual world when you start thinking about the spiritual world you come in contact with the spiritual world that way you can escape from this material world probably how can you say I, on that not, not today maybe next time onwards we will do that today youtube channel uh, live was not arranged some or other today everything was little misplaced i'm sorry probably how can you say om tat sat means get to escape from the prison house escape from the prison house yes if you think if you know the real place you will be able to escape escape when krishna is telling the plan then how we can train our mind in such a way krishna is saying shariram medavapnodi icha putramadi shra just like the air is carrying aroma from one place to the other uh, actually our mind our uh, subtle body is carrying us to the next body so krishna is explaining that you you attack that subtle body you change that subtle body to the spiritual nature by chanting the holy name of krishna and that subtle body will become spiritual in nature and then the atma travels in that spiritual subtle body we can go to the spiritual world right this is the escape plan actually can you please ah uh, okay i will do that krishna is asking me you you can whatsapp me your uh, your uh, email id i can you whatsapp for once is yes. you can whatsapp i can i can send it to you and uh, the email or whatsapp whatever it is and what does it mean uh, devotees like how krishna reciprocates with his devotees uh, they didn't understand ah krishna reciprocates with his devotees the kind krishna is saying krishna is willing to come in front of us in any form actually we are thinking we are not seeing krishna but then krishna is relating with us so much krishna is giving us water to drink krishna is providing us sunlight krishna is providing us oxygen see oxygen how much they are charging but krishna is not charging anything krishna is providing us everything simply you put a seed one seed will bring one type of fruit another seed will bring another type of fruit see how much enjoyment is available in the material world which is all provided by krishna so let's mention that how krishna is directly relating with devotees directly relating with everybody in this material world we we don't know you know not in this in the chat you please don't in the whatsapp group you can send me okay i'm not able to take out of this chat you are id you send in the whatsapp group sorry it'll be good okay thank you hari krishna hari krishna anything else will there be recording provided one prabhu ji one more uh, how can you say the paramatma means the lower and okay. the blue uh, how okay. can you say the paramatma means the lower and let the blue e r lawyer is not lawyer i'm sorry that's a I mean typing mistake lawyer lawyer means a person who is actually advising us how to get out of the prison so paramatma is actually advising us how to get out of this material world paramatma is guiding us slowly from the heart paramatma is guiding us you go hear bhagavad gita you go read bhagavad gita you chant hare krishna paramatma will actually 
dictate us all these things. Will there be a recording provided in YouTube channel for this class? Uh, on YouTube, we have not actually uh, made today. I will provide you this recording. No problem. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. We meet you next Saturday. Please be available on the chat. You know, anytime we are, I am free, I will just put it up. You can come and chat. Many people have not known that Saturday, the classes come on Saturday. So I will try to inform everybody that, you know, that class is shifted to Saturday. Okay. And from 7.30 to 8.30 from next Saturday onwards. Thank you. Next Saturday onwards, we will have advanced classes. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Prabhuji, so when will we have these advanced classes? Next Saturday onwards, advanced classes. Okay, Prabhuji. Thank you. Okay, Prabhuji, thank you. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhu, thank you for now. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. We are missing a lot of people today. In here. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, thank you so much. Hare Krishna, thank you. Anita. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, thank you so much for conducting Hare this session. It was very fun. Hare Krishna, thank you. So, with your permission, I will leave the meeting. We'll meet on next Saturday again. Thank you. Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Okay, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Okay.